Yeah, baby. We are live, man. This is exciting, dude. I've got Andrew Gaydon. What's going on, Mike? What's up, man? It's so good to have you. Listen, I've been super excited about this particular episode because um, uh, for those of you out there listening and watching, um, Andrew Gaydosh and I actually share the same market. And uh, I've looked up to you for a long time, man. You've been crushing it for quite a while around here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to pick your brain today, man. Thanks, man. I was uh, honored to be asked. And uh, man, I am super excited to, to chat you up as well. And hopefully we can you know, add some value here. Let's do it, baby. So let, let I always start to show off with, with um, just kind of helping the audience get to know you, man. And so when I say that, I mean, like, let's talk about, obviously, we're here to talk about real estate, right? We're here to talk about, um, we're here to talk about your business. We're here to talk about the recent changes that have happened in your real, well, I guess not, not so recent now. Um, we've been here since what, you came over in January or December and I've been over since. Yeah, it's been, January 1 was kind of our go date. Yeah, so let's let's dig right in, man. So tell me a little bit, and I don't know the answers to this question either, so I'm excited to hear your 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 response, but how did you get into real estate, man? Yeah, so I was uh, kind of, I don't know, I've been doing this, it seems like my only career, had a few jobs uh, in the summers in, in high school or in college and high school, but uh, basically it was, uh, I had a, a landscaping business and lawn mowing business that I had set up uh, while I was in, in high school. And uh, was saving for college, had a pretty good chunk ready to go, and then I was fortunate enough to get a forward. So I had this money that uh, was available for college that I didn't need anymore, and uh, I started buying real estate kind of on the side. And, uh, and then, you know, like all investors, they think, "Hey, we should get, I should get my real estate license and uh, earn the commission, right?" Yeah. So um, my mother was thinking about getting into real estate. I had a younger, I had a younger brother that was a prize visitor. Uh, I don't think they were planning on having any more children. And all of a sudden, 14 years younger than I am, my brother comes along. So my mom had kind of gone through that process of he was getting old enough to go to school. Uh, I was home for, uh, you know, our summer break. And she's like, hey, do you want to get your real estate license? And I knew I always wanted to. Uh, so I think she was looking for me to give her some help in the class. And I was, of course, looking uh, for something to do in summer. So anyway, that's how it kind of all started. And it, it took off. And didn't know exactly where I was going to end up. We really started out in the Dayton market because that's where I was going to college yep. and then the rest is history. A lot of people don't know that um, you played division one college basketball for University of Dayton. And I'm just throwing that in because obviously uh, in our area, that is a big deal. Um, do you think that 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 being growing up in team sports has helped you in business at all? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's uh, it's tremendous. I mean, I think from day one. You know, even from my high school coach to the discipline to, you know, seeing how, you know, you have to put forth the effort to get, you know, to get the results. And I think the biggest thing for me was the takeaway was, you know, we got better off. The way that I was able to get better than the competition was in the off season, right? Yeah, everybody excelled during practice, but what you did that others didn't want to do was really what was going to help a guy like me that, you know, I had, I was tall, had some natural talent, but I wasn't Michael Jordan talent. So I had to really hone those skills and be really good at what I was capable of. And uh, so that carried me through in the business world. And I learned, man, I learned a lot about business decisions and you know, uh, really time, uh, I guess the, the use of your time and scheduling, uh, trying to juggle all that in college. So yeah, I would say a hundred percent huge in terms of the competitiveness and getting knocked down and picked back up. And you know how it is. I mean, real estate is just a one big competitive game. Yeah, you talked about. I want, I want to back up just a little bit, man. You because you talked. You said something just just before that where you you said you had always wanted to get your real estate license and like we're so I, I'm curious because I'm trying to think back to when I I thought about getting my real estate license and I think it was in college too, but like what where does that come from? Like I mean, you know, obviously you you say that you're an investor, right? and you want to save the commission and that's you know that's great you'll take 3% of the commission but what i mean is how do you go from that right how do you go from that into building a team that now produces 2 to 300 deals a year consistently well i think it's just a natural evolution of you know when you're 21 years old you don't really know what you want but uh, the little baby steps kind of take you in the right direction uh, you don't know until you get there that hey this is you fail fast quickly or you know this might have some legs and let's let's run with it I think for me, that was the initial, uh, hey, I think this would make sense on the short term. However, there were influencers of 
of mine or, or you know, influenced me, guys that influenced me when I was growing up that uh, were living in the neighborhood that, you know, uh, did very well in real estate. And I always kind of thought, man, that might be something I want to do. So I yeah. think that, you know, the step for me, the initial step was, hey, my, the commission with the influence that, hey, this could be something else. But once you get in it, you know, I'm like you, I'm as competitive as they come. And, you know, you get in there and it's like, man, I could do better. I could, oh, this could really work. Or no, that doesn't work. Let's go a different direction. Uh, so I think that's kind of how it all shook out. Got it. And so how long now have you actually been selling real estate? Um, well, how long have you had your license? Yeah, so I had my license since 1996, believe it or not, right out of, well, while wow. out. So, yeah, so you got uh, it's been a while. It's been, I'm sorry. You got your license when you were 16? <laughs> oh, man, I was 12. <laughs> I was one of the first 12 years in the state of Indiana. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, it's been, I've been licensed for a while and really been jamming at a pretty high level for probably 20 years. Yeah, for sure, man. So when did you, when did you know that, you know, obviously, okay, you did the investor thing and you, you know, you saved the 3% and then you, you figured out at some point that, hey, man, you know what, I can make a living, you know, selling houses too. Uh, when did you make that shift? Well, I think the, uh, the initial, really the initial interest was the investor side of it. But when I went to class and I saw the level of, um, I guess, caliber of agents that were getting into the business on their second and third career, that was really the eye opener for me having time to spend with these guys and they're saying, man, if I would have had the opportunity to do this at your age here, I just got downsized from Eli Lilly or these big corporations in Indianapolis. And, you know, I, I think that that would be something that I would have wanted to do at your age. So once I got my license, it was, it was gung ho from that moment, moment on. I knew that it could be something that, that could uh, really run for a while. And then, you know, I just got in the grind and put a business plan together, had some really good minutes and, uh, and took off. Yeah. You know, you mentioned having really good mentors and, and um, you know, certainly you and I share some some of the same mentors. And um, I, I'm curious, though, with you, man, because, you know, we all go through this natural evolution in a real estate business. Right. And for you, it was the investor piece. And then it was, you know, you figured out that I can sell houses at a really high level um, if I run a residential business. And then, you know, the evolution is to hire an admin and then, you know, to bring on agents and then, you know, to naturally, you know, whatever you do next, whether it be seventh level or, you know, start other businesses. But like, how did that, did you, did you understand that you could, when you got into real estate and you were just grinding, right? And you, it was just, it was a solo show, man. And I think I lost you. Did I lose you? No, no, I'm good. Still here. Can you um, hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Come back. <laughs> we'll see if we can bring him back. Yep. You there? Gaydash, brother, are you there? Yeah. I didn't lose. I mean, I could still hear you. So hopefully everybody looks good. That's okay. I did. I just did my little circus act while you were gone. It was a, it, inter, we just went to intermission. So we're good, man. There you go. Cool. Good stuff. So what I'm asking is um, when you, so you, we do that, we go through this natural evolution. And, and so where did, like when you got up to a point to where you sold X amount of houses, right? And, and so I want to talk about your journey to when you figured out that, Hey, I need to get a coach or a mentor. Right. And then, then this whole new world opened up for you that, you know, you could grow a team, get leverage and, and really start, you know, uh, taking your business to the next level. So talk to, talk to me about that journey. Yeah, so I was pretty, um, I think what happened with me, it was, I was fortunate at an early age to really get after it pretty aggressively. So I think maybe six months into the business, I, I knew that, you know, we were having on, we were having success, or at least I was, it was an individual agent on pace to close about 35 houses that first year, which doesn't sound like a lot now, but in the day, that was a big deal to a 22 year old. Um, and uh, so I knew that was important. I started looking into franchises, uh, ended up purchasing a Remax franchise and, you know, open up to another world of how guys were doing what they were doing, man. They were selling a hundred homes a year, man. I got to figure out how to do this. Okay. If they're doing this, I need to, to emulate them. I need to figure out how they're doing it and naturally hired an assistant, hired uh, another, you know, a buyer agent, uh, certainly soon thereafter. So it was kind of a, a really, I guess my progression was just watching what the industry leaders were doing. And fortunately, Remax at the time was such a you know a cutting edge company. Right. I was able to see a lot of the big hitters that were in the business at the time and basically just do what they were doing. So 
from the beginning, it wasn't probably two or three years in, I had an assistant and a buyer agent and we were really getting after it. Yeah. And so I think, you know, when you, when you, when you go through a trend like that, you know, you, it really changes you as a person. Right. And so, you know, we, we all, it, it's funny because most of us, if we talk to um, agents that are, I uh, have either gone through what we're going through or uh, are, are getting ready to go through what we're going through, we can, we can essentially have a conversation about, you know, you know, hiring talent or, you know, evaluate or, or evaluating companies, right? Or there's all these different decisions that we have to make on a daily basis. I'm, I'm curious, right. like we're, we're, so where you're at now, right? I think the most impressive thing about you to me anyway, is the fact that, you know, you've like in our market here in, in Dayton, Ohio, um, you've done it year after year with consistency. And, and so what is the secret to being able to, to do that? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think that I think it's really just staying ahead of the game. I mean, really to be able to keep your nose in the business enough to know what's going on, but yet keep your your awareness of what's going on around you to know what's coming down the pike. And, um, you know, that's where the whole EXP thing was like it took me two seconds to figure that deal out. It was like that book blink, like it was boom, because you know, I knew enough to know where the industry was headed. I knew what it had taken to get there. Uh, and I knew that if I continued to do what I was doing, I wasn't going to be able to keep up with the Mike Walls of the world. So um, that was really important to me to, to, to get, to get uh, the next cutting edge thing. And, that, and, you know, and the other thing too is when you look at it and you say, okay, just because it works like this now and it's worked for the last five years, that doesn't mean it's going to work for the next five years. Right. And I think I realized that pretty quickly that, if you know, you're not constantly evolving, then you're probably going to become a, medi a mediocre agent. And that's the last thing I want to do. For sure, man. And, and, and that's a good segue into, um, into talking about your transition, right? Because you, know, you mentioned you were at Remax and you did the whole Remax thing. Um, and, and then I know that you moved over to Big Hill. Um, was that the next company you went to after that it was Big Hill? Yeah, so what happened was uh, Remax, I had a Remax franchise for 10 years and um, was really having a difficult time selling it in the market that I was in. I was in a smaller market in Richmond, Indiana, which is about 45 minutes away from Dayton. Um, and, and, you know, I sold from Richmond all the way to Dayton, but I wasn't really heavily invested in, in Dayton at the time. And um, so when we were looking for suitors for the company, no one else wanted to, to buy it. It was, you know, it was a small town. We only had 20, 25 minutes. Uh, for what we had in it. So, so the bottom line is the company that I went with was a result of them buying me out. And I had a, a five year not compete and ended up staying with the better homes and gardens was where we ended up. And, you know, great people, excellent, uh, excellent. I met some wonderful people through that organization. And um, yet that was kind of the progression. So I kind of ended up there. And, you know, as you know what you need and then you, you need different things and different resources. I mean, the bottom line is we were running like most top producers, we were, everything was in house. I mean, our CRM, our advertising, our management, I mean, we were basically writing checks to our own, you know, administrative staff, uh, all that kind of stuff. So when you start looking at it, it's like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm replicating within an organization and, you know, maybe there's something else out there that might be a little bit more efficient. Yeah, for sure. So when, when this opportunity was presented to you, um, well, first of all, let's talk about when you first heard about this opportunity. How, how was the opportunity presented to you? Yeah, so, you know, the big thing for us was, you know, obviously, Kendra and I, Jay Kendra and I are good friends. We we're 30 under 30, kind of, you know, we kind of met through that process yeah. and uh, kind of hit it off, had some similar core values and, and, and enjoyed each other's uh, company at uh, some of the events. So we had a, we had a pretty good uh, relationship going in. Well, as I was following him and and seeing how he was progressing. I met some awesome people. Al Stasek is one of my best friends. He was in our organization. So part of this mastermind group that we were with with NAEA, we were trying to solve a lot of our, you know, our industry problems. And, you know, team, you know, you have 30 of the top teams in the country in a room three times a year going over the same problems that we all had every year. It was the same old thing. How do we keep retention? How do we stop this from, you know, uh, essentially creating our own competition within our own team? How does this how does this team model work? What, what are we achieving our goals within the team, but not our long term goals? And that's what we just kind of kept going back at it. So we started looking at different, you know, thinking outside. Box. 
to you know, like, hey, what can we do differently that others aren't doing for longevity in the business? Sure, we're making a lot of money. Sure, we're having a good time. But, you know, we step away from our teams. Are we going to get paid in an exit strategy for all the stuff that we built? Well, Al and Jay and the rest of us were trying to create these opportunities within our teams to create agents and uh, looking outside of our industry, you know, how attorney firms do it. I've got a couple of friends that are in the business that had some really good long-term, almost golden handcuffs for their employees that they had, uh, you know, a big, you know, kind of at the end of the rainbow, there was a pot of gold if they stayed with them for a while. So we were actually in the midst of designing our own in-house policy that we were trying to roll out and see if it worked. When Al Stasek approached me and said, hey, Gatash, I think I, I think, I think I got something here. This solves a lot of our problems. And, you know, I took a look at it. And I'm like, man, you, you're right. I can't I can't really shoot too many holes in it because of my past experience. I had enough experience to know what didn't work and what I needed. And it was like, like I said, that book blank is like, boom, I know this is the way I this is what I have to do. Now, it did take a while to kind of move the Titanic and get to that point. Um, I had another three or four months where I had to kind of figure out how we were going to you know, get through the listings and get through get our get our own autonomy. But um, that's how I was influenced by the, the decision. I watched the video. It made a ton of sense. You know, it solved so many of the of the pain points. And that, that was really why. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, I think when you bring people on, um, everybody has a, a different reason um, for coming over, uh, depending on where you're at in your business. And like I know for you, when you've reached kind of, I don't want to say the pinnacle because I mean, there's always an opportunity to grow, but like recruit, when you talk about recruiting and retention, it becomes really important when you, um, when you get to a certain level in your business. Right. And, and so you're create, you're constantly creating culture. You understand that the importance of culture, but you also understand the importance of keeping your best people. Right. And, and what had happened for so long, uh, what I think you're talking about is we would bring people on and we would teach them everything that we know, and then they would just leave and go off and do it on their own, right? And so we were trying, what, what you're saying is we're trying to prevent, we're trying to add so much value, right? That I don't wanna say that we're playing defense and trying to prevent them from leaving, although that is the ultimate goal, but we're trying to provide so much value that they would never wanna leave, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think what I think our big challenge and like a lot of us is we provide a ton of really good value. And, and they, of course, add value to the teammates and, and everybody within the culture. Um, but really what everybody's looking for is that down the road, like how are how are our agents going to be able to retire with nest egg? How are our agents going to have the ability to maybe not work so darn hard or miss their children's or maybe at that time their grandkids, you know, birthday party. So I was finding that our team, our guys on our team, they're super, I think they were very comfortable. They enjoyed the level of service. Like you said, we really provide a lot of value, but that, you know, long wealth building strategy was really the missing component. I think that a lot of us agents run into is that, yeah, we can make a lot of money, but we spend a lot of money doing it. And unless you're exceptionally disciplined and you're, you're buying other, and you've got enough money put back that you can start to buy investment properties or, or invest, you know, with, you know, whatever you're going to do in life to create other pillars of income, it, there's a missing piece there. So that's where I feel like the XP model kind of just, it was just shining like a beacon to me going, you know what, this is going to give the opportunity for our agents to stay with us because they're excited about and they're happy with where they work, but they can also create long-term by doing the exact same thing that they're doing right now. And it, and, and at the time it was in theory, I thought it would work. It was a brilliant model. But here I'm sitting here a year down the road going, man, did we hit it out of the park? I was meeting with my financial advisor just before this meeting. And he's like, well, so tell me about EXP. Why haven't you said much about it? And I said, well, you know, I kind of wanted to drive that car before I told everybody to go buy one. And um, it's been the greatest thing in the world for us because it's given our agents the opportunity to do as well as they want with it, to spread the word, to create the income with the revenue share, the, you know, the stock opportunities um, and, you know, everything else that they've got. And they're able to work a little bit autonomous with us on the team. And the other folks on my uh, uh, my non, like my not Andrew Gadosh team, my team of EXP agents that are within my downline, you know, I just see them flourishing because they have the opportunity to basically be a broker without being a broker by, uh, you know, introducing it to other agents and having agents join them. 
Um, they get to share in revenue. They're in a perfect alignment with each other. They want to help each other because it makes financial sense. And it just creates that and fosters that nurturing program that they're growing their businesses even outside of their own towns and their state. So it's a, it's a phenomenal, I mean, I, just, I don't know, I'm anxious to see the next evolution of real estate, but at, at this point I can't see how it could get any better. Yeah, yeah. So let's 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 rewind just a little bit because I want to get a little more granular about your transition because this is where I, I I think that we can add some value to um, to shed some light on uh, you know what it takes uh, or what 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 team leaders are looking for and then and then talking logistically about the transition. So it made sense for you for not not one reason, but for essentially for recruiting and retention that solved a big problem for you. And there's there's a myriad of other reasons that you came over, but that being one of the bigger ones. So talk to me about when you made that decision, right? So Al comes to you and you're like, man, I can't poke any holes in this, right? And so um, you run a team, right? So it would be easy if it were just you saying, okay, yeah, I'm moving my business over, right? But it's not that easy, right? So you have, how many people are on your team or were on your team when you made the transition? We had around 12 agents that are on our team when we made the transition. Okay, so you have 12 lives in your hands, right, that you're responsible for. You are the rainmaker. And so talk to me about that, right? So you make the decision to come over, and then you do what? How do you approach your team? Yeah, so um, yeah, so basically made the decision. Uh, I just I just really listened to what Brent Gove had to say. I, you know, I just followed his game plan. I met with um, – you know, our agents individually, starting at our most seasoned agents. I got their opinions. I asked them to poke holes in it. I told them why it was important. And it's really easy to sell something when you're, when you're, when there's a benefit to them. I mean, obviously the whole reason that I initially did this was really thinking about our team and thinking about, you know, their lives and how it would be in alignment with ours. Yeah. Um, I know Kendra and I always talk, you know, you don't want to be the only guy on your team sitting on the boat. Uh, you want everybody on the team to have their own boat so they can all enjoy you know, their own successes. And uh, so once that happened, I met with them individually, showed them the video. Um, they got it because they had been through a lot of the, you know, the challenges that we were through. They, they saw the struggles that, that everybody goes through with the team, no matter what team you are, I don't care who it is. Um, the behind the scenes, they may look as buttoned up as possible, but I've been in business long enough and I've rubbed shoulders with a lot of these guys that, that were, were behind the scenes going, man, we got a problem here. How can we fix this? So I knew that, you know, they knew a little bit about those struggles because we're pretty open to parent. And each one of them to a T saw the video. It made sense to them. Uh, I did not have one complaint. Uh, you know, they saw the big vision, the big pick. And uh, at the end of the day, they all they all converted over. And I think pretty much everybody's been super excited and very happy. There's been a couple of the agents that have turned over not because of EXP, but just because you know, real estate was not part of their life anymore. They had some family issues and things like that that they had to tend to. Sure. Um, and, you know, if you're on our team, you know, there's accountability and there's things and there's expectations. But, um, you know, it's been a great thing for anybody that's wanted to stay in, in the real estate business. And I think that it, that's been an easy sell for us. Yeah. And I think, I, I think man, that you made a great point in that, you know, the, the way I think or, or, I think it makes the most sense to approach each agent individually. I mean, I get like you want to call everybody together. It's probably the easiest thing to do is call together a group meeting and just make the announcement. Right. But you're really not getting to the heart uh, or addressing, you know, that character trait in each one of your agents in, 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 in knowing how to deal with them. So for you, when how did like talk specifically about like when you got your, your some of your leadership group together right and, and you're talking to them individually and you're saying hey i want you to watch this video and poke holes in it was there was it were you reluctant at all did you go through any emotions at all or was this something that was just like bam 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 you were excited about it and they could feel your enthusiasm and it that like that ultimately is what ended up winning out yeah i think it was a combination i think they I mean, I think they trusted me, number one, to know that I wouldn't lead us down the wrong path because, you know, it hasn't been in my history. I mean, yeah, we make make mistakes, but they trusted that I had their best interest in mind. And, um, you know, again, I think it's easier to see this opportunity for guys like me that have been in the market for a long time, because when you're young, it's like, you know, you think, oh, I can just do if I just do something else. And I'm like, I get my team as big as Mike Walls and that's going to solve my problems. Well, yeah, it solves some problems, but it creates new problems. 
So as we all grow and, and you get to, you know, certainly there's a lot of room for us to get better and do more transactions. At the same time, when you get to what would be considered a very large mega team and you still have concerns and you still know that the business model is broken, I mean, it was, I would kind of like it, man. I had no reservations. I knew this was the direction that we needed to go. And I think through the confidence that they saw that as well as the history, trust me, I think that that was what that was what kind of led them down that path pretty easy. Yeah. And, and, and I think what's so cool about that conversation is, you know, in your heart of hearts that you're making the right move, not only for yourself, but for your team because of the new opportunities that it's provided them. Right. I mean, I came over from Keller Williams and we had this thing called profit share that, you know, um, there was no there was no rhyme or reason to how it happened. It just like if it happened, it happened. Right. And it showed up as some arbitrary number. It was never the same. But this I mean, this model that EXP has created, I mean, it is something that you can sit down with an individual and work out to show them how to get to a level of passive income, literally where they would never have to work again. So I'm, I'm curious, what was the response when you started going over revenue share and, and the, the, the opportunity to to build wealth through company stock? How was that received? Yeah, I think, um, I, you know, I, it's like anybody. I, I think a lot of them said, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe that those opportunities are there, but will it work for me? You know, they didn't say yeah. that, but I could kind of see their see their wheels turning like, oh, yeah, you know, Andrew, it'll work for you because you know a lot of people in the business and whatnot. But you know, able to share with them a lot of the stories that Brent Gove talked about, you know, where there was a soccer coach that, you know, sold one house a year and he just got one or two people that he knew that were the, the parents, the kids that he coached. And one of them took off and went crazy with EXP. And the other one uh, was a real strong agent. And next thing you know, these people, he's got, you know, 500 people on his downline. So I was able to share those stories with them. And I think they really started buying in. And, and truly, you can get out of this, you can get out of this model, whatever you want. And that's where, you know, sometimes I'm sure everybody gets tired of me hearing it. But, you know, if you do the work, you know, you go out and you bust your ass to list a listing, right? And you get paid for when that list is sold. And that's great. You might have a residual income seven years down the road when they sell their next house. Uh, but if you spent a little bit of time going out and listing an agent, you know, instead of a, a home or in, in addition to a home, maybe you get to the, uh, the office a half hour early, a couple of days a week and make a couple of phone calls. There's enough people out there that are that are looking for a better model because there needs to be. And with a model being broken, it's pretty easy to 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 uh, it, you know invite a better model, especially when they've felt the stove a couple of times and it's hot. Uh, I think that's the beauty of it. So I think through that conversation, through those conversations with my agents, and helping them understand that you don't have to be Jay Kinder to go out and recruit other agents or introduce agents to the to the business model. It's not recruiting. It's just having a conversation because what happens is. They'll ask you, I mean, Mike, how many times do you do a deal with a co-op agent? They're like, hey, Walt, how's that EXP thing coming along? Mm -hmm. It's like all of a sudden your ears perk up. And you're like, hey, well, actually, let me tell you, it's pretty good. You know, here's the video. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of that easy. Put them on a follow up. You know, I'm not saying it's easy to get people to join, but it's easy to incorporate that whole attraction model to your everyday business in real estate. Absolutely, man. I could I could not agree more with that. And I you know, I tell usually everybody I talk to, I mean, it, it's it's we're still doing the exact same thing we did when we were at Keller Williams. Right. We're at, at the end of the day, we're still selling real estate. Right. We're still meeting with buyers and sellers. That's what we do. But we've added right. in these two additional layers for passive income. Right. And and what and we've created more. I think about the last year.
You back, man? I can hear. You. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, was that your internet or was that mine? I don't know. I think it was mine, dude. But anyway, we're not people like sorry. Um, okay, so let's pick back. Can you hear my? Or am I coming through? Yeah, I can hear you. You're okay, good deal. Toddy, but... All right, man. Let's let's, uh, let's pick right back up the question that I asked. Okay. Before. Um, but really, what I want to do is just to, I'm trying to get people to connect. With, can you hear me? Because I'm having terrible feedback. Uh, say that again. Can you hear me? Uh, that's a little better. Yeah. All right. Good. I'm just hearing myself when I talk. Hang on just a second. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate uh, everybody stuck around for our technical difficulties. I think that's on my end. Um, I think we've worked. Through. Can you hear me? It's, uh, I mean, I can hear you spotty. Not very con consistent. Um, Go ahead. Sounds like uh, hit me up now. Say something. Uh, am I there? Yep, I got you, man. All right. So I've wasted like five minutes with my technical difficulty. So let, let's just jump right back to you because I think where we were at before, and let me know if the audio is okay. I'm still getting feedback. Yeah. So can you hear me okay? Dude, I can hear you crystal clear. Okay, well, tell me, um, go ahead and ask me because I, while you're working on that, um, go ahead and ask your question again, and I'll try to lead it off. Yeah, so I think where I was at is I was asking you, so that guy or that gal out there who is um, maybe at a small spot in their business, who, you know, who you might want to deliver the message to about ESP or um, might resonate with where you're at in business, what would you say to them? Um, to help light on why you know, a good reason to join the Yeah, I think so. You know, the main thing, and, and this is, I guess, one of the, the challenges that, that we have in anything in life. Sometimes the right opportunity comes around at the wrong time. And again, I think that this opportunity is so great, whereas, you know, we are at the beginning ground floor of this. I, I know it with 15,000 agents, it would appear that, that it might be, you know, getting too late. But I mean, I hear that every once in a while, but the reality of it is I see this company with 150,000 agents and we've only got 15,000 and that's not even counting the international. So the time is 
so good and so fertile right now that it might you might be asking yourself, is this the right time for me to, to make a move? And I would ask yourself, do you owe it to your family? Don't you owe it to yourself, you know, five, 10, 20 years down the road to do the same thing that you've always done, but in a model that creates wealth and revenue share opportunities for you down the road so that you're not fundamentally changing how you get up and put your socks on in the morning and what you do morning and your workout. And you go to the office and you sell houses and you go home and you do it all again the next day. That doesn't change. Everything is the same. It's just the model is different. It's a better model. They reward us for helping grow the company as opposed to paying for bricks and mortar and having paying for golf courses that, that private course owners of the company or, you know, private jets for the uh, CEOs. You don't see that in our company because the, the value or the revenue is shared throughout. And we're truly, uh, you know, a company owned company or employee owned company. And if you've ever watched, and, and I've studied this just because I've had family members that have been involved in employee-owned companies. If you've ever watched the success rates of those types of companies and how many millionaires are made just by them buying into that opportunity and doing the same thing they've always done, but they bet on themselves. And that's where I'm at with this whole deal. I bet on myself. I bet on my friends. I bet on my team. And when I look back in 20 years, I can promise you that the people that we're surrounding ourselves with, with this company yeah. are top notch people. How can they go wrong? I mean, if I'm going to uh, link arms with people in my market, why wouldn't I want to hook up and link arms with, with Mike Wall, knowing that he's a go getter and he's going to get after it and he's going to make things work. So for me, I look at it and I would tell those people, yeah, it might not seem like the right time for you because you're busy, you're burdened with all the other stresses of, of working in the business. Maybe if you're an individual agent or if you're a team owner, Maybe you're like, oh, man, will the whole team buy in? Trust me, they will buy in. There is opportunity here that they do not have in their current setup. So, you know, that would be my advice to them is don't let the grass grow too much because, you know, this is a tremendous opportunity right now. Mic drop, mic drop. That's great. <laughs> so, so you and I both know our very well, and there are a lot of additional brokerages here, and they have, um, have had a strong growth years and years how do you or why do people remain um loyal to brands yeah so the question there is you know why would people remain loyal to you know traditional broker or the brand that they're in i think it's just people get in a rut and i think if they are used to doing what they do every day uh, the fear of loss is a greater motivator than a fair game I mean, that every day I could, you know, I've had experience with that all my life. So if you fear you're going to lose something that you have and some of them are doing pretty good, it's been a pretty decent market lately. I think they fear they're going to miss out, whether it be just the short term, the temporary transition or, you know, uh, you know, oh, my gosh, will I be able to make as much money with EXP in my current market? Fortunately for me at a young age, I mean, at 22, I, I started out a tr traditional broker you know, in six months in, I'm jumping to Remax and then and my business went up. And then, you know, 10 years later, I jumped to a, a Senate brand and my business went up. And, it, and I look back and I can fall back on my experiences of having those experiences, knowing that, hey, it wasn't about the brokerage, it was about me and how hard I pushed it every day. So I don't fault those agents that have never had the opportunities that I've had, not opportunities, but the experiences that, that I've had to know that, oh man, it doesn't matter where you go, as long as you work it, as long as you do good business. I mean, EXP is not making us better salespeople uh, than we were six months ago. It's right. created a better business model. We're gonna be wealthier agents at the end. And I think EXP can help us with the technologies and all the other things to do it easier and to do it quicker and hang out with people that are more like-minded than others companies may be. So progressively, so in that sense, EXP will help you, but. The fundamentals of getting up and writing up and showing a property or doing your marketing, hey, that's on us. That's going to get better and better. And the more you're engaged, the more you play golf with better golfers, you're going to play better golf. And I think to answer your question without rambling here is that I think they fear they're going to lose something and it's nothing but the opposite. They're going to gain so much more. And those people that are ready to that concept are the ones that are jumping very quickly. Love it, man. I appreciate you being up the slack here with my audio is doing bad and we are some technical difficulties. So party shop here, man. Um, how can people connect with you if they have questions about growing a real estate business or more about EXP? 
Yeah. So, you know, you can all, number one, you can call me. I know people don't use the phone as much anymore, but my number 937-305-9570. So all those, uh, you know, those Gen Xers out there, they want to pick up the phone, call me. But, you know, if you just, you know, email me at andrew at the gate.com. Yet find me on Facebook. There's a really cool group that I started a Facebook community group. It's called neighborhood mayors or neighborhood mayor. Um, and if you check it out, pull it up, neighborhood mayor, I've got, I, I specialize in hyper local marketing. And, um, I'll tell you what, it's been kind of a life, uh, journey for me in, you know, I've kind of spelled out on that site, a lot of ways that we've gone in and captured 65% market share of communities that are 1500 home communities and have sustained that, um, market share for a long period of time, how to replicate that. We're starting to scale those, those opportunities. So it, check out neighborhood mayors, uh, our mayor. It's a really, really good Facebook community group that we're trying to always add content to just to help contribute. I feel like, Hey, the more you give out, it's going to come back in the long run. So if you could join, find me there, uh, wherever email, Mike, I'm around or just Google my name. You'll get me. Awesome. brother. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, man. And listen, we will definitely reconnect. Yeah, let's do this again. We'll get it. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get us in the same room. How about that. Yeah, we'll get the audio <laughs> dialed in too. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, we'll see you.